This is Twit. Uh, tell us, uh, give us a little bit of, of what you what you won these awards for. Um, I, I realize it's probably pretty technical and a little too too much for the majority of, of our audience. Not all of them, though. There there sure. are quite a few people here who who are working who work in that industry. But uh, just give us a sense of of what was it that got you these accolades. Sure. Uh, I will keep it short, but somewhat technical, but still short. It's called the American Society of Cinematographers, the ASC CDL, Color Decision List. And the idea is that the cinematographer and the director and the production designer and all have a vision for the movie. And that starts with the shooting that's done on set, or at least for parts of the movie that starts that way. So the idea is to protect that vision from onset through to what's called dailies, where everyone gets to see this stuff for the first time, into post-production, where the key work putting things together is done, and also into visual effects, and then putting it together to, to have the actual movie. Uh, and the ACCDL helps protect that vision and pass that vision through that chain and doing it in a way that people can use the work that other people have done to do their next step. So it, it helps keep the team going, too. Ah, while while keeping the color, for example, it being a color decision list, uh, consistent throughout that entire chain. Uh, it's partly keeping the color consistent. The more, key thing is passing the idea, the what's called the intended look, uh, through the chain. That's the that's the bigger trick. Well. Getting the color right through the chain is very tricky, too, and it requires some things that we can't make people do. We can only encourage them to do. Mm. <laughs> but there's more to a picture than color, of course. There's dynamic range or contrast, um, uh, Absol res resolution, and so on. Absolutely, and that's a big issue at this point, especially in consumer displays. People have the idea that, hey, look, 4K is an easy number to say. It sounds nice. It's good marketing. Uh, 4K is good. Okay, I, I was one of the people who insisted that we include 4K in the digital cinema specification. But resolution is not the only thing. The contrast, uh, the brightness, uh, that's a big issue these days too in some quarters. Uh, the color rendition, the, these, the, the detail, how fine the steps are in brightness and in color. Uh, those are all very important issues. Uh, frankly, a 2K image that has really good contrast probably is going to look higher resolution to most people most of the time than a 4K image that just has okay contrast. You know, I've always said this, that with this push to 4K or Ultra HD or UHD, as it's called in the home, yeah. and there are slight slight differences actually between those two terms, but they're used more or less yeah. interchangeably. But yeah. the TV manufacturers are all talking about resolution. They're all talking about, oh, we've got four times the number of pixels of HD. Um, but my contention has always been that if you increase the dynamic range or the contrast between the darkest and lightest parts, uh, you will see the difference much more easily than you will if you increase simply the uh, resolution and keep everything else the same. No question whatsoever that that's correct. Uh, most people in most environments for home type screen sizes, 2K is probably fine. I see the difference in 4K clearly. Some people claim it can't be seen. That's not my personal experience. Uh, but the resolution is is an easy thing to to talk about, but the luminance, the brightness, and the contrast range are inescapable when you actually see them. The, the picture can become captivating. There is an artistic vocabulary that has to be developed to use that high brightness well. Uh, you can do a little bit with it, but you have to do other things. So wide color gamut is something that uh, is probably also kind of interesting. Um, there's, there's a lot of pieces to how the images get put together. The thing that's driving UHD TV is that consumer electronics companies want to keep selling televisions and they've reached some saturation on current flat panels. So they want the next thing. Uh, and then the other thing is that it's really expensive to make uh, plants that make glass plates for LCDs and even for, and for plasmas also, but especially for LCDs. And they want to make one or one per size, not three technologies or three resolutions or anything like that. They want just one. It's a lot cheaper. That's mm. sort of what drove us to digital cinema also. It's cheaper to do release a movie in one way than it is to release it in three ways. 